What's up? I'm Alex, your Daily Code Mentor. Today we're having a quick introduction on jQuery. jQuery is something that I've seen a lot of people use. Uh, most of you guys do in boot camps. You guys have been t taught about vanilla JavaScript and then you get taught uh, about jQuery and lastly you learn about JavaScript frameworks. I have nothing against that. Um, I just know for a fact that frameworks tend to be better. Like Vue and uh, React in my experience are always a better choice. However, I also understand that you may want to have a deeper understanding of uh, the DOM, the document object model, the relationship between JavaScript and HTML, and as such, you may be learning vanilla JavaScript or you may be learning jQuery. That said, I'm gonna show you the, the most important things you have to know about jQuery. And this is gonna be off the top of my head, it's just an improvisational speak, just to challenge myself and also just to show you exactly the things I use daily, the things that I actually use so much that I remember them so accurately. So let's start by, uh, I'm here in a JS fiddle, I have just jQuery and some elements here. Uh, the reason why I want a couple elements and I'm gonna add the class to this is just so that I have, uh, um, I can show you a couple of things. So the first thing is the classic document.ready. This is simply equal to window.onload or document.onload. There's nothing special to this. And then you just feed it a function. The old school way would be this. Uh, you may see me using um, arrow functions, but it's basically the same thing. I'll use arrow function because it's shorter. That said, you just feed functions to functions. Nothing uh, very complicated there. Just <coughs> this is your bread and butter. Your 100% bread and butter is the classic on click. So let's just show it. Let's say I have this button. Uh, I'm gonna select it. Um, most of the time you use classes, but I guess technically you could do just do button, button square bracket zero. The interesting part is that if you do this, you actually have to do dollar sign button square bracket zero dollar sign because otherwise, if you do this, you don't have the on click, and so this would actually not work. Uh, we we'll do alert to just uh, to show alter. I love it. Alert just to show that it's. Um, more verbal and as you can see it's not working also because we haven't run the code but the reason why it doesn't work is because the selector doesn't select any specific element in order to select the specific element element we're gonna have to do this so as you can see now it works why is that because this is basically your document of query selector all which will query all of the elements so if you get more than one match that's what happens however if you add class uh, uh, button and then you do dot button now you can actually remove this additional layer of selector and technically speaking you can just do this right because now every button that has that class you want that because it's literally one so this is your bread and butter this is how you do an on click the only problem you will have when you work with jQuery is that if you generate new elements you're gonna have to tie this handler to the um, either to a parent that already existed, or you're gonna have to tie the connection after. So if you were to do something like uh, dollar sign button, pa pa pa, and then dollar sign, you could do um, I guess this dollar sign this, which would be the button dot append, and then you can append literally HTML, type it as a string. So you could do p chow p. Now this will work, and this will append stuff. I guess we'll just select this actually. Let's just do, let's change this to a class just because it's more, it makes more sense. So we're just gonna do this. We're gonna select this and we're gonna append this HTML to it. As you can see, we can. Uh, the thing though is uh, what happens if we do dollar sign dot uh, uh, banner uh, dot actually, let's add a class to this. Class equals uh, paragraph, you know, chow p, okay. So we have this choppy class. What happens if we uh, <laughs> add the handler here? This is super advanced, by the way. I mentioned this is that's literally the reason why you should use frameworks, to be honest. The reason why you should use React and Vue, because you don't have to deal with this BS. So what happens is that now, alert yo, is that uh, this should actually, no, this will not work. So now I add, and uh, when I click on this, as you can see, nothing happens. The reason why it doesn't happen is because there's no, this element doesn't exist at the time I wrote that code, and so there's no event handler actually attached because 
at the beginning of the execution, dollar uh, sign dot chow dash p results in an empty result, and so this dot click never gets attached to anything. However, if you were to do this, you would actually uh, solve the problem, I guess. You would avoid it. But as you can see, it creates another set of problem, which is how messy is your code gonna be that every time you generate an element, you now are adding a new um, handler. Um, ah, fair enough, you actually will get more than one because every time you add, you basically are adding. Yeah, there you go. So this is uh, pretty messed up, as you can see. So it doesn't work either. It's not the solution. So the only solution you can use will be something like dollar sign document dot on click. So you're gonna have to actually specify uh, some uh, bigger element, something like dollar sign document dot on, and then you can type click, and then you're gonna type the specific sub element, which is gonna be dot dot. Uh, what was it? Chow dash p, and then you're gonna feed it a function. And so by doing that, now you should have dynamic binding. There you go. And now it works. Why does it work? And why is it <coughs> we could do better? What can we do better? We just put it on banner message instead of uh, on document. So this way we are not using um, too big of a DOM navigation. We don't have to navigate the DOM so much. And, um, and as you can see, this works. Why? Because the handler now is attached to a, an element that already existed. So this is your gotcha for uh, jQuery when you're going to build stuff like timers and stuff. Uh, that said, uh, there's just a couple more things we can look into, and uh, one of them would be uh, changing colors, for example, and add classes. So the way you do that is you, you can do something like, let's say, div class container, and then uh, we want to just change the color, you know, color, color. We just want to change the color of this container. And we're just gonna have uh, a, um, a background of gray, and we're gonna change it to yellow. And then uh, on my own click, I'm just gonna select the container, and then uh, um, container dot style, no, dot CSS. And uh, the first one is gonna be the rule. The second one is gonna be the value. So the rule is gonna be background, and the second one is gonna be yellow. Okay. So I'll just run, press this, and as you can see, it changes. Something else we can do would be dollar sign dot uh, container dot toggle class, which uh, is a way to add or remove a class. You can also uh, use add class and remove class, and these are legendary. These are very important, very useful. And the class that we're gonna add is gonna be square, and basically dot square. He's gonna have a width of uh, 300 pixel, a height uh, of 300 pixel, and uh, that's about it. So that way it's a square, right? So let's do that. Let's run. Let's change color. And as you can see, we toggle the squaritude of this. So we can also add class, remove class. I guess this is fairly trivial. The last thing we, we can look at uh, that is very important is the Ajax. So it would be dollar sign dot Ajax which is just, just works like this, and then you fit in an object with settings. So in the documentation, I can just type in jQuery Ajax, because honestly, I don't remember on the top of my head the parameters. There's no reason for you to do that. Just have a URL and then a bunch of settings, or just do it with plain settings, and you can go over the documentation. Now, something that I'm able to do in the last couple of years that I haven't been able, and so as a student, you may feel unable to do just watch the documentation, which is my answer at this point. The reason why is because I've noticed that most students, their brain is trying to look for a quick fix or a solution. And unfortunately, you have to completely surrender to the fact that there is no quick fix and there's no solutions. Like the only, the, the easiest way to know how to work with something is to work with it and to have read the manual top to bottom one when you needed it. That's the best way. Every other alternative will eventually prove to be wor literally left you wor it leaves you worse off than uh, just doing this. Because I can tell you what you gotta do. Like, most likely you gotta do a, a what is it? A before send if you wanna add headers. 
a uh, complete uh, which is the function when it's done or success probably success is the best one just use success and then uh, data to add data and that's about it that's about it however you you scrolling through the documentation gives you the added ability uh, of calibrating and uh, and working with something that is new which is the most important skill so many potential clients of mine on here they ask if I know of this obscure technology and honestly I'm a little shocked uh, I actually don't, don't really like to work with these people no offense uh, if you're one of them but it's because they think that, um, that you're supposed to know this stuff beforehand I mean it definitely doesn't hurt but how in the world can I know all of the technologies the answer is you don't nobody can but some people are able to learn faster they're just able to look at something and learn fast. And that's something that you are able, that's a skill that you can cultivate if you start learning now. Just start by trial and error, by having a goal and trying to achieve it, you just learn to adapt. And by learning to adapt, that makes you an incredible developer, okay? That's why most companies interview for uh, these weird problem solving solutions. Uh, or questions rather it's because they want to assess that you are a problem solver so that said that was a quick intro to jQuery my advice for you would be why don't you build a to-do list why don't you build a few CRUD uh, in the backend based uh, apps and that way you're gonna be good uh, places in which you will 100% find jQuery are WordPress most websites uh, done a few years ago and uh, those that do not have uh, jQuery, you're probably even worse off if they're that old. Um, that said, at this point, jQuery is kind of surpassed. I still prefer jQuery over vanilla JavaScript, even though uh, at this point, there's almost everything is available through ES5 and ES6. Uh, I personally don't, don't like Fetch. I honestly don't like how it works. So I prefer jQuery, although I prefer Axis over all of them. So that said, uh, you, you can definitely go deeper. My advice would be just get effective with jQuery and then focus on something that is stronger, something like React or Vue that are going to net you massive, massive, massive results with way less effort. Okay, with that said, I'm Alex, your code mentor. Have an amazing day.